us an 8.5 day one. The very first learning target of this lesson is um, to be able to solve oblique triangles you, we're using that are given where we have two angles and a side given um, and we're using the law of sines. Now, why do we use law of sines and law of cosines? We use those because these are non-right triangles. Oblique meaning non-right or not perpendicular to the base. So we have non-right triangles. We can't use Sokotoa. We can only use Sokotoa to solve right triangles. So in day one, we're looking at that very first learning target. Again, oblique, an oblique triangle is a non-right non -right triangle. So it could be an obtuse triangle. It could be an acute triangle. And we're going to have to solve those without using Sokotoa. There is still a relationship. We can't use a squared plus b squared equals c squared because that also only works for right triangles. But there is still a relationship between some of the trig functions when we're looking at oblique triangles. So solving oblique triangles, we have two options. We can use what's called law of cos, law of sines, or law of cosines. Today, we're going to be looking at how to use law of sines to solve triangles. And so when we use law of sines, we're using this when we have two angles and a side. Two angles and a side. And they are uh, given two angles and a side. So in this picture, there's actually a relationship between the angle and their sides, and all of the angles and their sides. In fact, if I know that measure of angle A and the length of side A, it's opposite side. A is opposite of angle A, side B is opposite of angle B, and side C is opposite of angle C. For every triangle that I draw, whether it is right, obtuse, or acute, I will put the sides, the opposite side is what I'll call the lowercase letter of the angle. So this is cap angle, cap of angle B, capital letter, side B, lowercase letter. Angle A, uppercase letter, side A is the opposite of angle A, lowercase letter. There's actually a, a ratio for these that works because if there were similar triangles, then they would work as well. Okay, these the ratios would be similar between the sides. So there's actually sine of angle A. So thinking of angle A, if we were making a, a triangle, but then we have this side over here, sine of angle A over A, and I should have done that in green. Turns out that the ratio, sine of angle A over A, is going to be equal to sine of angle B over side B. So this is a ratio, sine of that angle over this side. This is a ratio, sine of B over this side, and those are equal. And those are also equal to sine of angle C over side C. Now we can't solve an equation that has three sides. We can only do two-sided equations. So in solving this, you're either going to need to know two sides and an angle, or two angles and one side to solve a proportion. So I have this proportion. I've got two ratios. This one is a ratio over a side. This one's a ratio over a, over a side. I either know two angles and one side, and then I could solve for the other side. Or two sides and one angle, then I could solve for the other angle. And it doesn't have to be for angles A and B. It could be for angles A and C, or for B and C, or A and B. So we're going to look at an example of how to do this. And lucky for us, they've already drawn the picture, so that's very helpful. Um, we'll call this 13 is side R, and there's angle R, and it's 63 degrees. So I actually have a side and an angle. That's helpful. And I have another side, uh, or another angle, but not its side. So I have, of those things that are circled, this is one that I'm solving for, and I have these three pieces of information. So I'm going to have sine of R, which is 63 degrees, over its opposite side, 13, equals sine of 51 degrees over its opposite side, S. So we have to find side S. Well, we can cross multiply and solve. 
in cross multiplying, we're going to get S times sine of 63 degrees equals 13 times sine of 51 degrees. Now, some of you want to always just put things in your calculator right away. Please do not do that because then you're going to get rounding errors unless you leave the decimal values in your calculator. When we write this out, we want it to be as exact as possible. We don't want to round until the very end. Now, they said for each side that we're solving, because we're solving the triangle, and in solving the triangle, we have to find all missing sides and all missing angles. So we're supposed to round each side to the nearest hundredth and each angle to the nearest degree. Well, I'm solving for S, so I'm going to have to divide by the sine of 63 degrees to get S by itself. So this is, this is what I have written to show my work for how I'm solving for side S. And that's what I'm going to put in the calculator. How I put it in the calculator is 13 times sine of 51 divided by sine of 63, verifying that I actually am in degree mode. Because if I'm not in degree mode, then I'm going to get the wrong answer when I solve like this. So 13 times sine of 51 divided by sine of 63 turns out to be 11.338. We're supposed to run to the nearest hundredth, so that'll become 11.34. So side S is 11.34. Now we're not done solving though, because we also need to solve for side T and angle T. Angle T is actually very easy to solve for because I already have two angles in the triangle. So if I do 180 minus 51 minus 63, I know the measure of angle T is 66 degrees. So that's one of my answers also. Measure angle T equals 66 degrees. So side, there's my answer for side S, there's my answer for measure of angle T. I still have to get my answer for side T. Well, the sine of 66 will go over its opposite side, T. So that's the sine of T, sine of 66 over T, equals, I'm going to go back to our original one. I know we found this side to the nearest hundredth, but I always like to go off of sides that were given because then they were not rounded. They were given exactly as they are. So sine of 63 over 13. I'm doing the angle inside that was given, sine of the angle over its opposite side. When I cross multiply, I'll have 13 times sine of 66 and t times sine of 63. And those are degrees, but I can't type degrees in the calculator. So I'm going to put this in the calculator, and at the same time, I'm going to hit divided by sine of 63 to solve for t. So 13 sine of 66 divided by sine of 63 gives me 13.328, which is 13.34. So side t is 13.34. And then I go up and list my answers for side s, 11.34. Measure angle T, 66 degrees, and side T, 13.34. There's my final answers, and below all this is the work to support it. Letter B, see if you can pause the video for a moment and just try to set up the ratios or the proportions you might use to solve the problem. All right, so I do know this side and this angle, so I'm going to use those for pretty much every problem because those ones are guaranteed that I actually know their value. I think that's sine of 29. If it's not, I'm going to ask you to change it to it because I can't see now that I wrote over it. I think it's 29 degrees. So I have sine of 29 degrees equals 8 over 18 equals, well, I'm trying to find L, so that will equal sine of 25 degrees over L, as I solve for L. A separate proportion, sine of 29 degrees over 18, equals the sine of K, whatever K is, I'm going to find that out right now, over its opposite side, lowercase k. Well, if I do 180 minus 25 minus 29, that's 126 degree angle for measure of angle K. So this is 126 degrees. So the first thing I know is the measure of angle K is 126, and I already have my proportions set up for the other problem by using law of sines. Sine of the angle over its opposite side equals sine of the angle over its opposite side. I'm going to solve these two problems separately. Here I'm going to cross multiply L times sine of 29 degrees 
equals 18 times sine of 25 degrees. I'm going to divide, to get L by itself, divide by sine of 29 degrees. So that's how I'm going to calculate L. 18 times the sine of 25 degrees divided by the sine of 29 degrees. This gives me 15.690, which is 15.69. So there's my decimal approximation for L, and they told me to round to the nearest hundredth, so I did. L equals 15.69. And then to solve for K, I have K times the sine of 29 degrees equals 18 times the sine of 126. To solve for k, I'm going to divide by that. So I'm going to have 18 times the sine of 126 divided by the sine of 29 to get k by itself. So 18 times the sine, not sine inverse, sine of 126 divided by the sine of 29. That gives me 30.037, so 30.04. So there's my work to support the answers that I have above for these three pieces that were missing from the triangle. That's how we find sides when we're using law of sines. But as I said before, sometimes you'll have sides, but not all the angles. You may only have one angle and need to find the other angles. So let's take a look at what happens with that. This actually does conclude the video for today. I'm going to ask you to try problems C and D. You will compare those in class tomorrow and get help with any of those before doing the practice. Um, before we can solve for angles, we have to talk about a case where there might actually be two triangles that are drawn. So we'll get into that in, in the day two video clip. But for now, if we have two angles and one side of any triangle, two angles and one of the sides of any triangle, I can solve for the other side using law of sines. If you need to go back and review these examples, feel free to rewind the video, but please try letters C and D. We'll go over the answers in class tomorrow. Have a great day.